So I don't know if this made its own video or if this is part of week 18, but it is now stats and awards time. I sneezed three times in a row and it sounds like I'm dead. But obviously we have to look at how the season finished. See if uh, we won MVP. Probably not, right? We had a couple of interceptions. Didn't really have many rushing touchdowns or rushing stats, which is definitely ironic considering we... Uh, we have Justin Fields, but uh, this is uh, not going to be what we look at. Yeah, actually, we will look at our, our guys first and then look at the league. But Justin Fields, 5,269 yards, 59 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, completed 72% of our passes, over 300 yards per game, a 137.9 pass rating with an average of 11.2 yards per attempt. And then in that final game, had a 100-yard pass, sacked 33 times, had 804 downs played. Very durable guy, too, because we got hit a lot. A lot. 33 sacks does not do justice for how many times Fields got attacked and hit and just destroyed. But Swift didn't get to 1,000, got injured uh, several weeks back. Would have easily gotten to 1,000, obviously. 14 games played. Would have had three more, maybe three and a half more, because it was actually pretty early in the game. It was definitely the first half, so three and a half games more. Would have easily gotten to probably 1,300 yards, maybe more. Uh, didn't get to double-digit touchdowns. Would have done that as well, I imagine. Tucker, though, 417 yards, 6.4 yards per carry with four touchdowns, which isn't really that great when you consider the fact that we did have a lot of of long runs and Becker kind of proves that with the fact that he has 297 yards which is 100 less yet almost double his contact yards after contact which is why I probably will give him another chance to start for the playoffs as his ratings do kind of give him the nod in my opinion because yes he's uh, not very good at change of direction or juke move but his trucking and stiff arms decent and he does have a little bit of speed 89 break tackle what does Tucker have if Tucker's nowhere near that you might as well start him yeah, 83 break tackles, pretty low. He's faster, but, I mean, he's not even really that much more jukey. He just has better change of direction. Uh, maybe a little bit better in the receiving game as well. But Becker, I think, is our best number two running back. Tucker, number three. Uh, he'll be in the, what is it called, the third down spot. So, on those passing downs, he'll be able to catch the ball out of the backfield. Receivers, three, four guys over 1,000 yards. Mitchell, the rookie. 1289 with 14 touchdowns really good yards per catch and then obviously looking at the games played he missed four games yet still put up some pretty damn good numbers i suppose you look at his now downs compared to uh mooney and you know they're pretty similar just like the stats are of course washington 16 touchdowns 1200 yards should get to star wish he would have got to superstar but that's just not going to happen uh darnell mooney though uh you know we just talked about him 1200 yards 11 touchdowns more 1,000 yards with 11 touchdowns. A couple of, you know, outliers here and there. To, you know, Komet with some plays. Tyler Scott coming in for uh, basically Mooney because Mooney would move up to two when Mitchell was injured and then Scott would go back to the slot. Definitely wasted Tyler Scott a bit, but, I mean, as of right now, you know, technically Darnell Mooney was the better player. Maybe I should have just used Tyler Scott and just developed him and he would have become a better player, but... It is what it is. We are where we are. Sack totals. Did we have any players? No, everyone gave up some sacks, at least at least a few. But nobody over double digits, which is great. Sack totals on the defense now. UJ with 15. Crawford, who is now injured, 11. 7 for Basham, 6.5 for Buckner, and then a couple here and there for other players. Highest tackler. Didn't even get to 100. <laughs> Edmonds, 3 sacks, 6 interceptions, 11 tackles for loss, 96 yard tackles. Imagine that's worse than last year. Oh, man, this nose after sneezing. Yeah, worse than last year, but more tackles, though, I suppose. Maybe that means something. Same tackles were losses as last year as well. No forced fumbles this season, though. A couple more deflections and a touchdown. Looking at the interceptions, definitely down this year as well, Eddie, with eight. Six for Edmonds and Brisker. Five for Gordon. Three for Johnson, Woodard, and Barnes. Two for Dawson. One for Stevenson and Basham. Looking at kicker, Dicker missed two, which is definitely not usual for us. Probably in the rain or the snow, one of the two. Gill, 50.6. That's actually not bad for a user league. Barnes, two kick return touchdowns. And then Valus Jones with no punt return touchdowns. Looking across the league, though, let's take a look at how everyone performed. But here are the quarterbacks. I think Mahomes did do enough to win the MVP award again. 
Passer rating's higher. Yards per game isn't as high, but game doesn't really value yards as much. Also, if you were looking at the numbers as a whole, you would definitely say that Mahomes is better just because two interceptions is two interceptions. Uh, did have less sacks, though, so he also had less downs played. But uh, if you looked at like maybe the whole team aspect, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, looking at the other numbers, Ritter, a couple of interceptions, Allen, some interceptions. Interceptions aren't as high as, like, the league usual. Usually, like... 90% of the league has like almost a one to one touch on a pick ratio. So, I mean, I'm kind of proud of it. Some are worse than others, in fairness, but uh, we'll see what those rushing numbers are looking like. Usually, uh, we're on that list, but not this time. We got some injuries and also just did throw the ball more. There's no arguing that. Uh, but Bijan is the number one running back at 1,582 yards, 16 touchdowns. Uh, what about yards per carry? Let's do yards per carry first. Uh, of the kind of fair ones, I would say Braylon Allen, 6.8 yards per carry is the best in the league. Uh, and Swift's actually up there with 6.6. Um, but Lamar Jackson, 6.7. I guess that kind of counts. Probably uh, did a lot of read options with him. Spears, Robinson. So, uh, you know, if you're in the sixes, you're you're in the elite category, which is good. Uh, what else do we have? We have a rookie, Omari. Oh, he was not a rookie. Why did I think he was a rookie? When was he a rookie? I feel like I'd never seen his name. X-Factor. Okay, that's interesting. Um, when the hell was that X-Factor gain? Was that always? Maybe I overpaid for Swift. Okay, let's just be honest. Maybe I overpaid for Swift, especially since he's now injured. That's kind of like a big knock on him. And, well, he's injured. Great. Especially since he didn't even run the ball that much compared to other players. Uh, what else do we have there? though? So those are those numbers. Touchdown numbers. Derrick Henry at 18. 17 for Corum and Irving. Uh, Robinson with 16, Young with uh, 16 as well, Pierce 15, Allen, Burrell, and Spear. Nope, Allen and Burrell with 14, Spears, Pacheco, and Eckler with 13, Caffrey with 12, Javante Williams, uh, Ramondre Stevenson, Brian Robinson, Jameer Gibbs, and Josh Allen with 11, Hampton and Hall with 10, and then nobody cares under 10, right, Swift? Uh, looking at the receivers, number one yards goes to Devontae Smith. Number two yards goes to Kyle Pitts, both on the Falcons. Uh, Rashi Rice with 1,500. Jaden Reed, Jefferson with 1,400. Diggs kind of 1,400. Same with Daniel, uh, Debo Samuel, and Marquise Brown. And then McLaurin with 1,300. Uh, Mitchell's actually up there with 1,300. Kincaid at 1,275. Shorts at 1,255. Uh, and then Darnell Washington with 1,248. With 16 touchdowns, which is that great number. Uh, a lot of over a thousanders. A lot of them. Got the Bengals back to back, just like the Falcons were up there in the top. Uh, who is that? Marvin Harrison Jr. What about the touchdowns? McLaurin, Washington tied for 16. Roman Hunter and Blade and Kelsey. Both Chiefs players with 15. Uh, rookie with. Oh, he does have a thousand. I thought it was Kelsey's numbers that I was looking at. Debo, Devante, and uh, Marquise. And J Zaylin and Tony and T. Higgins all with 14. Uh, Ayuk and Diggs with 13. Goddard with 13. Brevin Jordan, that's a name drop at 12. Jamar and Jamison with 12. Elijah Moore, James Cook. James Cook with 11 receiving touchdowns. Uh, DJ Moore, uh, Ridley and Mooney and Jefferson and Reed and Rice and Pitts all with 11. Uh, who had the longest or the best run after catch? So Devontae Smith with 700. Rashi 600. A lot of go routes, I'd imagine, especially since I've seen a couple of uh, shorter names in there, or shorter names. Uh, slower players. Uh, Jamar with 10.5 yards uh, after the catch average, which is pretty good. The longest, obviously, we got that with Zaylin Mitchell at the end, but 95, 94, 94, 92, 88. Weaver, he's got to be fast, surely. Superstar Dev, 94 speed, that's pretty fast. Blocking, a uh, couple of uh, you know pretty good players. Right guard, uh, you know starters. Skaronski looks like he probably, in my opinion, would have won Offensive Rookie of the Year or Rookie of the Year O line of the year. I'm all over the place here today. Uh, for the AFC side, who gave it the most sacks? That Mackay Beckton with 17. Those uh, those finesse ratings, they are killer. Only a 79 overall. That is brutal. Being superstar, it's just if you want more for him. But Jamie Tan, 142 tackles. Henley with 129. So I got a lot of guys with over 100. So don't think we're going to be getting the dev up for Tremaine again. Sack totals, of course, this is going to be misleading. Wow, Lucas Van Ness put up 17.5 for the Patriots. 
That's kind of suck, because I don't think he put up those kind of numbers for uh, Toxic and his Packers. Probably goes to Superstar. Yeah, look at that. Four and a half, four, and then 17 and a half. Is it just because he's playing on the D-line rather than, like, as a linebacker? I know it's same. It's edge, but different stances, I suppose. I guess the 4-3 is just goaded. Or is there a lot of sim games? There could have been a lot of sim games in there. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, obviously, we're not going to know what these actual sack numbers look like because you could see that, you know, Uche is not on the list or Crawford, and they would have been on that list. So not going to put too much, you know, stock into that. But here's some interception numbers. Only two guys apparently over double digit. But once again, that could be another misleading one. We do see Eddie Jackson this time. But if we see Eddie Jackson here, someone else might not be on the list. That should be uh, interception yards. Uh, the highest for the person with the highest picks. Who would have thought? Force fumbles. Three for Jamin Davis. And Roquan, Zayvon Collins, Owusu Koromoa, Matthews. Luvu. What about Matthews? Because we were going to go with Matthews. Didn't. Stayed star dev, though. He is a pretty good player. We should have definitely went for him instead of, like, Woodard. But it is what it is. We don't even see Woodard play much anyways. Interceptions. The highest total is three. Safety. Couple of safeties. Uh, block kicks. Few block kicks. Speaking of kicks, let's take a look at the average uh, or the best. And Andres Carlson. He would have only been normal dev going into star Decently uh, high kick power. Did Dicker get a dev up once before? I don't know, but I would imagine these are the two winners of uh, Kicker of the Year. You got to be pretty much 100% to even have a chance at it, and there was only two. Uh, where is our guy? Because obviously we missed a few kicks. Is he normal dev, or did he actually get a dev up? Oh, so I think we did win Kicker of the Year like last year. Either way, I mean, he's good. Winning Kicker of the Year means nothing second time because you can only get one for the award. Punting, who had the best average? Stout with 53.3 kick returns were they limited this year a lot of people kicking them short or sideways now which I like to see the league kind of like adjust I still kick it straight down the field but uh I like to see the league adjust to a, an issue you know everyone just finding a common goal to attack which is the OP kick returns let's take a look at the players of the week the last week uh Savage with three interceptions and then the big one, yearly awards. Mahomes, number one for MVP. Fields, number two. Josh Allen, number three. Burrow, number four. Hertz, Richardson, Peck, Ritter, Love, Allen. So only one non-quarterback on the list. Coach of the year <laughs> goes to the Falcons. Uh, we were number three, which is, I mean, that's what it is. We'll quickly look through the AFC side, which obviously we are not a part of. But, you know, we're showing the whole league, so why wouldn't we? Uh, Lucas Van Ness was three. That name just kind of just shows to me. Blade, Rookie of the Year. Man, Rookie of the Year on the AFC side was definitely a bit easier to win. I can't lie. Uh, I don't know about defensive Rookie of the Year, though, to be fair. Quarterback, Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen. Some pretty really, you know, really good quarterbacks. Uh, running back, Tajay Spears. A little bit of a surprising name there. Especially since, isn't Derrick Henry still there? That, I mean, I don't know if the AFC is just easier to win awards other than, like, quarterback but kind of seems like that Skaronsky at Titans team it did cook it did cook uh what about D-line Miles Garrett uh Van Ness at number two so that's kind of a real big loss because there could be some dev ups there uh then linebacker we got some off ball really not many off ball actually mainly uh pass rushers Cam Taylor Britt I don't know how many picks he had but number one for DB what a name drop and then best kicker does go to Tyler Bass, like we ex uh, assumed. Of course, now it is our side, the important side, if you will, for me. Braylon Allen was number one for Offensive Player of the Year with Justin Fields having the number, uh, the numbers he did. Fields at number three with 59 touchdowns is crazy. They really hate turnovers, which makes sense. But, like, I think they're, they're judging them a little bit too harshly. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Fred Warner with Gary number two. Lee Cooker, number three. That's a name drop. Uche, at number seven. Didn't even think we'd make the list. Offensive Rookie of the Year, we barely stole it. Like, I would say it was Tony Schwartz's award the entire season up until week 18. That 100-yarder absolutely is the only reason why he won Rookie of the Year, which is going to go from, you know, probably going to Superstar to guaranteed to go to Superstar and maybe X-Factor. Uh, Burrell, number three. Burrell, I don't know, you know, which way you want to say it. Peck at number four. Mack and Weaver at 5 and 6, Dunze at 7, Roby at 8, Wharton at 9, and Max Otten at 10. Jacoby Holmes, the defensive rookie of the year. Did we even start a rookie? 
I don't think so. Rodriguez, he had a pretty good season, so some of these other guys must have had some really good seasons too. Best quarterback does go to Justin Fields, which is not really a surprise. Pretty uh, expected names there. Swift still made the list at number nine, which is something, which, I mean, we'll take. Uh, best wide receiver, we were at number five, so almost Pro Bowl, maybe Pro Bowl if one of those other guys goes to the Super Bowl instead of us. Uh, actually, we can probably look right now. Lindstrom, uh, I don't know if he was already able to go to Superstar, but... Uh, you know, if he didn't already go to Superstar, he would be now. Uche was number two on the, the D-line, which is great. Uh, and looking at DTs, I don't think there was a higher DT than Crawford. I think Crawford is like DT1 for the NFC side, which is definitely saying something. Unless Aaron Donald's actually playing DT. He's at least in the Pro Bowl, which is something. Hopefully he gets him that dev up as uh, he really has just struggled to get a dev up. We haven't gotten any real breakouts, to be honest. Uh, Eddie Jackson, number three. Tremaine at number five. Dicker at nine for missing two kicks. Anders Carlson wins the Kicker of the Year award. But yeah, I'm kind of curious. We do have two upgrades as well, but I am curious to see some of our Pro Bowlers. I'll uh, I'll look through them all and uh, you know show them as they go. Obviously, Fields would be a Pro Bowler. Uh, obviously, none of our running backs would be, but Zaylen Mitchell might have. Let's see. Zaylen Mitchell got that upgrade as well. Did not make the Pro Bowl, unfortunately. But I guess we will just look at Fields real quick. Did he make the Pro Bowl? Oh, wait, maybe they don't show it. Oh, it's on the bottom. It was last week, not this week. Okay, so maybe he did win it or make it three Pro Bowls, which also means because we have it where if quarterbacks make Pro Bowl, they go up in sense of pressure, which is why we went from paranoid all the way to average. I think the next one's ideal, which is great. Uh, but, yeah, let's actually take a look at Mitchell because apparently it was last week that you would see that stuff, not this week. Uh, I guess he didn't make it anyways, <laughs> so it's kind of irrelevant. Uh, but if he didn't make it, I doubt DJ Moore would have made it, but I think that would have been like the second chance he would have had, if that, uh, and he didn't. Definitely should see Darnell Washington on the Pro Bowl list, so let's see if that is the case. And he is Pro Bowl appearance, 3,300 XP. So we got two Pro Bowlers so far. Definitely would not have had any of the offensive line there, but I'm just curious why not. Maybe the center, if we're really lucky at best. Maybe. Maybe the center. But, uh, oh, left guard, actually. Tevin Jenkins. So that's three Pro Bowlers. Did not think Tevin Jenkins would have made it. I don't remember what his numbers were. It must have been like four or less. And the center did. Wade uh, Wade Henry made the Pro Bowl. So that's four Pro Bowlers. Darnell Wright, I can't remember what kind of uh, season he had. He was okay, I think. Did not make the Pro Bowl with him. Uh, Sean Odom, yeah, I don't think he would have made it, but I think he did play a couple of snaps, so just in case, you know, take a look, just in case it glitched. So we have four Pro Bowlers so far. Then we have Cameron Smith, maybe he would have a chance, he did not. Uh, Uche definitely would have made the Pro Bowl, I would imagine, so let's take a look. This would be number five. Five Pro Bowls, sweet, almost an upgrade point as well. Boogie was not really that good, but because he's a higher overall, I will take... What do we say? Five now? So five Pro Bowlers. Crawford should make it as well, even though he probably won't be able to play in it. Uh, so that's six Pro Bowlers now. Pretty good. Pretty good. DeForest Buckner, I don't think he would have made it. He had a pretty tame season, but maybe tackles for a loss or something like that. Uh, Water, definitely not. Edmonds, maybe. So we're at six. Uh, did not make the Pro Bowl, so there's definitely no chance of him getting a dev up. Uh, Jacob Dawson, definitely not. Maybe like Stevenson. Definitely Eddie, though. No for Jalen Johnson. Stevenson. Let's take a look at Stevenson. Uh, no for Stevenson. So six. And then a Jackson would probably be our last one at seven. No, he didn't even make the Pro Bowl. Okay, I guess uh, Eddie Jackson just got snubbed. But let's take a look at Brisker. Brisker made it, though. What? So seven with Brisker. Eddie had more interceptions, and he was higher on the DB list, though, wasn't he? Am I confused? Yeah, I don't know where, how Brisker's a pro bowler. I mean, a lot of these guys are, like, cornerbacks, technically. So, oh, that's probably why. Because you look at Hooker and Bates, they're both free safeties, I imagine. Eddie's at number three. Still, I guess they probably only put two. I guess Brisker just gets strong safety by default, because Baker's a strong safety. Garner's a corner in our league. Peppers, I think, is a free safety, I would imagine, because otherwise he would have... So I think we got Pro Bowl just based on default. Not that he had, like, bad numbers, but six interceptions getting Pro Bowl is kind of crazy. So we had seven Pro Bowlers, a few unexpected, especially on that offensive line, and a couple of upgrade points. Got some free XP off of those uh, Pro Bowls as well. 
Zaylin Mitchell, already really good release. We want the medium and short route up. I don't think you're going to get medium too often in slot, but what about, like, playmaker? Is there anything, is there any value there for us? Juke ability? Yeah, I guess if he were to get higher juke move, he would be pretty deadly. So I'm going to go with playmaker. You get a lot of upgrade points in these usually, and a couple of juke move would be nice, and a speed would be really good. Uh, any juke move? We got a break tackle. One to catch, one to deep route, one to short, one to spec. I mean, that's a really nice upgrade, as he's now 94 speed at six foot five, bro. And I don't, I mean, maybe there is a wide receiver one, but uh, I don't think there is a plus speed to wide receiver. But 94 speed, I think he started at 92. Might have started at 93 in fairness, but that's a hell of an upgrade. We will take that. Zone coverage for Stevenson is actually a lot lower than I would have thought. I thought he was like 85, 86, something, but... We're going to go with zone coverage because of that fact. Plus three. Oh, beautiful. Plus three with the catching upgrade. Now puts him at 82. So a plus three put him at 82 zone. Definitely slacking on that, but that's all right. 92 man, 92 zone. He's definitely uh, upgrading a little bit there. 80 hit power, though. He's kind of crazy. But if this was a standalone episode, it's a standalone episode. If not, it's a pretty damn long week 18. Regardless, though, uh, those are the stats and awards divisional round i guess we'll take a quick peek into i don't know if any of the games were played yet it does not appear to be so there's a good chance based on my understanding that i would expect packers or cardinals if i were to guess packers or cardinals I would think whoever wins that game is who we're going to play because I'd say the Cowboys are going to win and I'd say the Falcons are going to win. So I think we're playing winner of that matchup between the Packers and Cardinals, like I said. Uh, sucks we're not like the nighttime game. 640 is still pretty nighttime-ish anyways, but that's what I think is going to be the matchup. So as the number one seed, I guess, I mean, it really doesn't matter because no matter what, we were going to have a hard team to play, I think. But obviously, it comes down to who wins, because the Panthers can win, the Cardinals can win, the Buccaneers can win. But if we were the number one, uh, the number two seed, we'd likely be... Well, we'd first have to play a game, so we'd have to play the, pa the Panthers. Then we would pretty much likely play the Cowboys, I would think, right? Assuming the Cowboys win. So either way, I think... Then the NFC side is just a really hard side to win on. AFC, there's some, there's some teams there, too. Yeah, I mean, it's just... There's some tough teams, I guess. No matter what, you're you're just in a spot. No matter what seed you're playing, uh, you know, if you're in the first, you don't have the first round by. Maybe you're playing an easier team, but then again, playing a team is harder than not playing a team. Regardless, though, like I said, if you guys enjoyed, maybe leave a like, subscribe if you're new. If you're not new, I really do appreciate your continued support on the channel. I don't know if I feel like this is our season. We definitely struggled a lot more than normal, especially late into the season, especially on defense. And we don't have Swift, so uh, our running game is going to probably struggle. But then again, Becker is a hard guy to bring down. So if we can get a couple of blocks and he gets a leadoff, I mean, he pretty much runs through anybody. So we'll see. We're going to try to develop the run game a little bit, but this might be a fields carrying situation. We'll see what happens. Uh, but that's about it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video, see ya.